Yeah. That's a magnet that I put on there to hold the to hold the Allen wrench so I wouldn't lose the Allen wrench. I use every earth magnets all over on everything. I have one on my tail stock and one on my head stock. I can put my Allen wrenches and whatever else there and they're always right there when I need them. Jake, do you ever use sanding sealer before you put any kind of a finish on? Yeah, because how many people have sanded something, you thought it was absolutely perfect, and you put the finish on it, and all of a sudden all this jumps out at you? <laughs> Does that happen to any of you? <laughs> okay. If you put the sanding sealer on there, anything that's going to jump out will jump out with the sanding sealer, but the sanding sealer is designed to be sanded. And it also fills the pores. The other thing, if you were to take any piece of wood that you turn to sand and look under an under powerful enough microscope, it would look like a cotton ball. And you know what happens around here when we have a freezing rain? How the ice coats all the limbs on the trees and everything? Well, when you spray that sanding sealer on there, it does the same thing to those fibers, and then you can come back with sandpaper and knock them off and get rid of all those fuzzies so then when you put your finish on there you get a much better finish. An important thing to me too with sanding sealer if you use multicolored woods especially with Paduke or uh, uh, blood, heart, blood wood mm -hmm. uh, and you have poly it keeps it, it keeps the sand, the sawdust from contaminating the, the lighter colored woods. Not to say anything, Jack, but I thought that was important. I'm using a detailed spindle gouge, and it really does not have the traditional bevel on it. It's rounded off kind of like a scoop, and I'm using it most of the time like this, so the sharp is almost straight up and down. And I can take that and sweep it and make any kind of shape I want. This is a grind that Mark Chalet puts on his tools. And there is a devil to run. Rub is just not very much of one. But you have really good control and you can do just about anything you want. I can turn, take this and turn a little tiny um, details <laughs> and turn signals down to the size of a toothpick with this too. No, it's not really a fingernail grind. Right? Alright, now, since I cut that away, you can see how these patterns stand out much better than if I had just left it. I'm going to go back with the skew and take a little more off this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this on back here. Um, That's the nice thing about the lathe is you can make instant design changes. Sometimes by choice, sometimes not. stay horizontal like that it needs to be symmetrical <clears throat> but if it's something that's going to be vertical you do not want it symmetrical and your eye will tell you it doesn't look right even if you don't know why it doesn't look right to you 
But if you get a chance to look at a, a canopy bed or something that's got turn, a lot of turn stuff on it, look, look at that and how the patterns are different on the horizontal and vertical parts of it. It's nice to have nice, clean, fluid lines to your work. it with a tool where I've just cut it. It's just whatever. And yeah, let, me, let me hit that with sandpaper just a little bit. I got some 400 here. And see how that builds up on the sandpaper? So you, you, you got to keep the sandpaper moving. Really gonna work better if I power sand. <clears throat> Case of 220 here. Now I want the sandpaper. Now if this is the bigger piece, I'd have the blade turned way down. If I was doing my finished sanding, I'd have to but I want to have the sandpaper turning in the opposite direction of the, uh, the wood. So now I'm going to reverse it here. See by power sand, I'm not getting a build up on one place on the sandpaper. Uh, 
with the 320 here with the funny edges on it. By the way, I got this at Harbor Freight, and this is a keyless chuck. I don't recommend it because you start sanding, it keeps coming in, put it in reverse, it keeps coming out loose. So if you buy one, you buy the orange one with the, that takes the key. And now I'm going Never use a rag. Use paper towels. Actually, the paper fibers have a sanding quality to them. But you never ever do this with a paper cloth rag. Yeah, I have a sanding sealer. Where did you buy that? Lowe's. The you can buy Def lacquer at Walmart, but they don't carry the sanding sealer. The only place I found the sanding sealer in the spray can or in the quart or gallon is at Lowe's. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you can use other sanding sealer that's not lacquer, but you're going to pay for it in time. You got to put it on there and let it set for. point to start this cut and then I rock down into it. And I don't think my point is really sharp. But it looks like that's clean all the way across. So. piece of the puzzle and I'll pass this around and I'm going to run to the restroom before I start on the next. Yeah. All right, let's get back started. You're not going to get to see the whole demo. Um, while I was on break, I was asked why not use a rag. The reason you do not use a rag is a rag has long continuous fibers in there and those fibers will catch in the wood and it will grab it and wrap up around in there so quick with your fingers in it that you won't believe it. But the paper towel has short little wood fibers in it and they will break and tear off and not grab